again, welcome to Week in Review, where we take a look back at the reviews we did last week, give you short, uh, kind of concise descriptions of them. If you want to know more, you can check out the full reviews. With that being said, here we hey, go. Hey, everybody, Z Garcia here. Last week, I reviewed three games, three pretty good games, too. I reviewed Odin's Ravens. This is a reprint of an old two-player game. And uh, the reprint is very nice, though it does simplify the game considerably. And be aware of that if you're familiar with the first one. Uh, it does feature some gorgeous artwork and some really nice gameplay. So Odin's Ravens, thumbs up from me. I also reviewed Pirate's Den. This is a push-your-luck, piratey, simultaneous selection game. Very lucky, pretty swingy, but lots of fun. And I do recommend it if you're okay with that much luck and... and that much take that sort of action. And then lastly I reviewed The Prodigal's Club. This one is a work replacement Euro game in which you are trying to lose all your money, lose all your votes, do the quote-unquote worst you can do. It's a sequel to Last Will which had the same theme and I think this one's even better than the first one which was pretty good already. So uh, big thumbs up for The Prodigal's Club. And that is it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Oh! YouTube, I'm Forrest Brown's Game Corner. This is my week in review. The first game I checked out was Chopstick Dexterity Mega Challenge 3000, which is a chopstick dexterity game where you take a pair of chopsticks, you're going to be trying to get food out of a main bowl into a small bowl in front of you at the same time as other people are trying to do the same thing. It is a lot of fun. It's a blast to play in short bursts. It needs a couple house rules here and there, like getting rough and tumble. But that being said, it does have a restricted player count. If someone's really good with chopsticks, they're probably going to crush you every time. Next, I checked out War. Or for the White House. This is a two to four player modified version of war. Yes, you heard me. And it gets worse from there because uh, oh, there's a sticker on the box that kind of ruins the box when you first open it. And there is a card. There's a negative three card that when you play that card, guess what? You just lose three of your cards. And if you double it, you just lose six of your cards. Wow, this game is absolutely terrible in 1987, so imagine how bad it is now. Next, I checked out Manhattan Project Energy Empire, coming to a Kickstarter U very, very soon. This is a worker placement game where you're going to be trying to protect your environment, score victory points by turning cubes into dice, and dice into various different things, and energy, and workers, and your typical worker placement stuff. This has some cool tricks up its sleeves. Really enjoyed this one. I think Minion Games has another hit on their hands. That being said, it drags a little bit with five players, two players loses a little bit of tension, and also the game has a very steep learning curve, but still a great game. Last but not least, I checked out Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Rings, the deck builder, and wow, I'm a big fan of Cryptozoic System, and this is my favorite game in that line. And this is the perfect game for gateway deck builder fans. Uh, the theme comes across pretty well with the, uh, with the real pictures from the movie, and I love the fact that instead of having a special ability, you actually have a card that goes into your deck and it does something super cool every time you get to it. Huge fan of that. Slap of hours best seal on it. This has been my week in review. If you enjoyed it, you check out my channel too. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. On my own YouTube channel this week, I reviewed King Chocolate, which if I had played it before I made my year-end list, this probably would have won my worst game of the year. Then I reviewed Da Luigi, which is a, a game from Europe. It's a family level Euro game where you're trying to serve people, has a little bit of take that, a little bit of Euro elements, some cubes, putting, uh, matching them up. Good family level beginner Euro game. Next is Amphipolis, which is a Reiner Knizia game. It's a family level, uh, tile place tile drawing and set collection game simple but very good for families next is ninja camp which essentially is sort of an abstracted uh, game where you're trying to move ninjas around and use special abilities and you're getting points from the places that you started on interesting way of abstracting and trying to cut the board off from each other and lastly haru ichiban which is a two-player uh, strategy game abstracted but with a cool theme uh, from Bruno Cathala where you're trying to be the young gardener or the senior gardener and each of them get different actions interesting mechanisms pretty actually extremely abstracted but the colors are beautiful it looks awesome and it's a solid abstract Hey everybody, um, three games for review this week. First one is the greatest game ever in the history of the universe, and that is Kalos, my favorite game of all time. Finally got around to reviewing that. I love it, obviously. 
The next game is Hocus. This is a new game. It's kind of a poker variant with some magic and stuff thrown in. Uh, really uh, surprised by this one, how intricate it is and how fun it is and how sort of it plays differently round to round and, and how you evolve. You're kind of like building your own sort of poker environment, building communities and pockets and pots and stuff like that. Very cool. Check it out. Uh, last one is Isle of Sky. This has some buzz coming off of 2015. I had a chance to play it a lot over the holidays. Really enjoy it. Kind of a bidding game uh, for you bid for tiles, and there's just multiple ways to score them. It's going to change up uh, game to game. Another one I definitely recommend taking a look at. Thanks. Hey, folks, welcome back to another week in review. This week I was only able to do three videos, and uh, only one of them was really kind of a review ish type video where. Uh, I took and went back to Ethereum, a, a game that I have reviewed recently in the past, and I took a look at some new minis that they have coming out this year for one of their expansions. And uh, so go check that out if you're at all interested, Ethereum. And then I also was able to do two, kind of a new area of videos for me. I did two top five videos where I looked at the, my top five games with dwarves, uh, which is looking like this. And then I also took a look at my top five games, uh, Viking games. So uh, those were just kind of my thoughts on the five, the top five of my favorite of those two genres. And so you can go check those out and see what you think, uh, see if uh, we have any uh, crosses and alignment there. So uh, that's all I was able to do, though. See you on the flip side. For me this week, I started a new review series with Jason in which we take a look at games together called Every Game is Awesome. The first one we took a look at was Nippon, uh, which is a game about area control and producing resources in Japan. I felt like it was kind of the same as many of these style of games, although it did have some very interesting mechanisms. Jason liked it more than I did. Uh, and then we took a look at King Chocolate, which is a game about producing chocolate and running it through different systems. And we both absolutely despised that game. It looked boring and felt boring as you played it also. And then Raiders of the North Sea. Uh, we did Miami Dice. Me and Sam did that. A very solid style Euro game, which had a cool mechanism of putting one worker out and then pulling another worker off. Uh, kept things flowing. It had a little bit of feeling of Stone Age to me. A lot of fun. So those are our reviews from last week. You'll see some more for us this coming week. Until next time, I'm Tom Bassel, and you've been watching Week in Review.